Hello, today I'm going to talk about topic two, the test we had, and I'm going to go through one of the versions. I believe this is first period's version. Um, either way, um, the first problem, the gradient, I just want to make sure that you knew that the gradient meant slope. So we're just looking for the slope of this line, and since it's in y equals mx plus b, hopefully it's pretty obvious that the slope is just 2. Okay, so we want to find the slope of the line that goes to these points. So we do the change of y over the change in x. So we get 4 minus negative 2 and 3 minus 3. So here I end up with 6 over 0. And since the 0 is on the bottom, no, that's not okay. It's undefined. All right, for number 3, we do the same thing. Change in y over change in x. We get 2 minus 2 over negative 1 minus 5. So here I end up with 0 over negative 6. So hopefully we know that's okay. So the answer is just 0. Okay, the equation of a line is given by this. So find the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is when we solve for y and x is 0. So we have y minus 6 plus 2, 0 plus 1 equals negative 4, 0 minus 2. So minus 6 um, plus 2 equals 8, right? And then you can see now we get y minus 4 equals 8, y equals 12. So if we want to do a parallel line, so luckily we can see that this is in slope-intercept form, so the slope is 2, so for it to be parallel, it needs to be the same. So, oh, sorry, I forgot the negative. Number 6, we want to do the perpendicular, so here we know that the slope is negative 2, but for a perpendicular line, for a perpendicular line, it's going to be the opposite reciprocal. So it was negative, now it's positive. And it was 2 over 1, so now it's 1 over 2. So that's why it's 1 half, or 0.5. All right, a 1 to 1 function. So that means that only one x value corresponds to one y value. And it's, um, so it passes that vertical line test, it's a function. So if this is the original function, so this comes from f of x, all right, then that means that the inverse, so the inverse, oh, well, hold on. I guess we don't really need to answer that. That's for the next part. So we want to find f of 7. So if x is 7, then what is y? So we go over here. x is 7 right here. So y is negative 5. Okay, now here, this one's asking for the inverse. So the inverse function is where we literally switch all the x's and y's. So instead of negative 4, 7, it's now 7 comma negative 4. Oop, that's not the end. There's more points than that. Okay, and so then we have negative 3 comma 0, 8 comma 2, um, negative 5 comma 7, and 0 comma 10. So here we want to know what happens in the inverse function when I plug in 0. Well when I plug in 0, sorry my pen stopped working, hold on, technical difficulty, there we go. Okay, so f is 0, um, x is 0, so that means that the y must be 10. Number 9, so here we want the domain of this function. So here I'm going to go to my calculator, go to y equals, I'm going to go ahead and clear that stuff out. So here we're going to put parentheses around the numerator, so how do I get out of there? So parentheses, 2x plus 3 divided by x minus 8. We can graph that. 
and we want to know what the domain is, so that's the x values. So let's see, it's starting to end around here. Okay, so let's, um, let's trace it. So if I keep going further, I mean the left side's clearly going to keep going towards negative infinity, but the right side, I don't know if it's going to um, go towards a number like an asymptote or if it's going to just keep increasing forever. So let's pay attention to our x values and see if they start winding down. Okay. Oh, there we go. I started to get some more. Okay. So there it looks to be a jump. So we can zoom out. Let's adjust our window. I really want to see my my x values. So let's do our x's from I don't know, negative one to or I'm sorry, let's do zero to 15 and then let's change our y's drastically. So let's do like negative 100 to 100. Cuz I wanted to make it taller. I wanted to see that jump. So if we trace it, okay. My y I'm sorry, my x seems to be having an issue around 8. Okay, which makes sense because if we think about it, we have a restriction, all right? We can't divide, we can't divide by 0. So that means x minus 8 can't be 0. So x can't be 8. There's your restriction. Okay. All right, so again, you could use the calculator, but to me, it's just so much f faster if you just think of the domain algebraically. So like, for instance, this one has a restriction, okay? I can't take the square root of a negative number, right? That's my issue. So x plus 2 must not be negative. So it's got to be either 0 or bigger. So x must be bigger or equal to negative 2. And since equal to negative 2, we're going to use b because a bracket is equal to. You can't ever equal infinity, so infinity should always be a parenthesis. Okay, for the range, all right, I would look at your graph. So go over here to your equations. So we have x squared minus 6x plus 16. I'm gonna do zoom standard. And it's thinking there we go. Okay, so here we've got a parabola. Hopefully we realize that. And that's just the range is going to be everything up. So we got to look for that maximum. So you can do your trace, or I'm sorry, second trace. Look for that maximum. I'm sorry, minimum. It's a lot. It's got a low point in this parabola. Silly me. So let's find the left bound. Where is it? There we go. Okay, so the left side of the minimum, the right side, and then wherever I think it is. Okay, so it looks like the minimum is at when x is 3 and y is 7. Okay, so the minimum is 7, so that means our parabola is, if we're looking at the range, the range is up and down, so this is negative infinity, infinity. We're going from when this y point was 7 and up, so 7 towards infinity. Okay, make sure you know how to write this, okay? <coughs> okay, so let's see. Find the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of the intersection, so I would literally just graph these. So we have um, x cubed minus 1 and negative 2x plus 1. Graph it. Okay. 
That was my first one, the x cubed. And then the red one is my line, the negative 2x plus 1. So we do second trace, do intersect. You follow the guidelines. It's saying the blue, blue curve, red curve, guess. It's all about the same. So here we have our intersection point. So look at the rounding. Make sure you follow that and watch your negative signs. They're very, very tiny. So pay attention to that. Okay. That's how I got the x and the y coordinate. So on the calculator. The next one is the minimum and maximum of those. So here I'm going to put parentheses around this one and then times negative 2x Oh, I forgot to put plus, plus one. And then clear out my second one. So I'm supposed to do f of x times g of x. So now we graph it. <coughs> and now we can see that our, we've got a maximum up there. So we do the second trace option and use maximum. And that'll get you your x value and your y value. Okay? So again, on calculator. So here we want to find the smallest and largest so we can use our calculator. So the zero is just number two. So the zero is when it hits that x intercept but it might be hard to see. So let me exit out of that, get my graph back. So let's zoom in and if we do number two that should zoom us in very, very close. Maybe it might be too much. We can always adjust our window. Oh, great. So now we really can see those two intercepts, okay, because it looked like one for a minute. All right, so now we um, zoom in. We do second trace. We do zero, so number two. And you follow your prompts. Left bound, right bound, guess. There you go, 0.5 is the x value, so that's my smallest zero. Then I do the same one for over here, and that should also get me my largest value, which is one. Number 18, find the axis of symmetry of x squared plus three. So hopefully you know that's a parabola. So here we could sit here and do our calculator and do x squared plus three, and then, um, Oh, I should have changed my zoom. But now it's thinking. Okay, so zoom six. Okay, so if I find the vertex, then my um, axis symmetry is going straight through that. Okay, so if you find that the vertex should be zero comma three, you can do that algebraically or with a calculator, either way. Once you find the vertex, you know the axis symmetry has to go through x equals, right? It's a u-shape, so your axis symmetry should be a vertical line, so it should be x equals 0. Number 19 and 20, so we want to find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes of that function. So we're going to do 2x divided by x minus 4. We graph that. And here we've got our, looks like our vertical asymptotes right around here and our horizontal is this way. We can adjust our window and we can go, um, we can make it very, very large. I'm going to go by tens and go from negative 100 to 100. There we go. Okay. So now if we trace it, we go to the left side, we can start to see the Y leveling out. So here we see that our Ys are getting closer and closer to, it looks like 2. 
So that's how we get y equals 2. Horizontal, y equals, vertical, x equals. So then we want to we want to trace this way. So I'm going to go back here and go this way. Oh, let's see, it's jumping too far. Okay, notice it jumps from one graph to the next from when x is 3 to when x is 4.5. Okay, so if we plug in numbers that are close to that, well that's 4.5, so what if I did 4.3? The y is 28. What if I did 4.1? all the way up there to 82. Okay, what if I did 4? Well, I get no y value. Why is that? Oh yeah, I have a restriction, right, where x minus 4 can't be 0, so x can't be 0, there's a vertical line there. Okay, so you want to pay attention to little tricks and stuff like that. Okay, number 21, directionally proportional. So here, that means A equals some constant times B. That's directly, in proportion, or directly proportional. Indirect, okay, or inverse, um, um, in, yes, indirectly is where you're gonna be dividing. So A equals K over B. Okay, so know those, know those tricks. So here, if A is 11.5, when b is 5, well then we just do 11.5 divided by 5. I could have done that. I don't know why. Okay, so we get 2.3 equals k. So then now we find when a, what, what, what is a when b is 12? So what's a? k is 2.3. What's a when b is 12? And that's how we get our answer. 22, so hopefully you remember this. This was in your homework. Literally pulled it from your homework. Just changed the numbers. Okay, so how much um, bacteria is there after five minutes? Literally just knowing how to plug it in. We're doing 200 times E to the 0 0.12 times five. So 200 times second LN gets us our E. 0.12 times 5. There's our answer, 364. Um, again, if you're doing three significant figures, those are the three first digits rounded. Okay, number 23. This was the open box. Okay, so I made it 4 by 5. So this side, we're going to make this whole side 4. And we're going to make this side 5. Well, to find the volume of a, um, let's see, of a box, we do length times width times height. So we're cutting out these corners and then folding it along this part. Okay, so those sides are, are folding up. Just wanted you guys to visualize it. Oh, nope, didn't mean to take that away. All right, so we need our, our length and our width. Well, we want this piece. We don't want all the way from edge to edge. So that means we need to take that whole thing and subtract those x's. So our length is going to be 4 minus 2x. Our width is going to do the same thing. We just want this piece. So that's just going to be 5 minus 2x for the width. And our height, that's just going to be this piece folded up, right? All of those pieces folded up have the same value of x. So our volume is this equation. So let's see what it looks like on a graph. So we have 4 minus 2x. 5 minus 2x. This also came from your homework, mind you. Okay, so we graph that. And it should be popping up any moment. There we go. Okay. 
Woo, we have a lot going on. Our numbers must have been really small. Let's zoom in. So I'm going to do zoom in. Zoom in down here and see what's going on. There we go. Now we're starting to see it because our numbers were 4 and 5. Okay, so zoom in a little bit more. Okay. Just a little bit out, but that's okay. I can fix my window. Just make my Y go up a little higher. And then there's your maximum. All right, so here our graph would start with no volume, right? If X was zero. And then as you increase it, yeah, you get a bigger box because the Y represents, remember this represents, V represents the volume, or <laughs> volume represents Y, okay, and vice versa. So, and we keep going, and then all of a sudden we start to get a negative volume, and then that doesn't really make sense, right? So, we're just going to stick to this part, find the maximum. The maximum should have a Y value of 6.56, because V is thought of as your Y, and, um, which ref represents our volume. So you're looking for the largest Y value, which is also called your max. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, you know where to find me in class.